All right, guys, so we are standing in front of a 2020 GMC Denali with the Duramax. This is a heavy-duty truck, and we're about to take this plus this Keystone Alpine fifth wheel out for a cruise to see how it performs towing it. Let's take a look at the numbers of this trailer before we take off. So this is an Alpine, which is very similar to a Montana. This has a gross vehicle weight rating of 15,000 pounds, runs on 7,000-pound axles, G-rated tires. That's really nice. This specific one has a payload capacity of 2,980 pounds. So the dry weight of this specific trailer is going to be closer to about 12,000 pounds. So before we take it out, we're going to take a look at the sticker inside the door jam of this truck to see what the payload capacity is for this truck, simply because when you look at the overall amount of hitch weight that's going to be resting on the pin, you're probably going to be in that 3,000 pound range, maybe a little bit more when you are fully loaded, but when it's empty, probably between about 2,500 and 3,000 pounds. So they've moved the trailering sticker to this side of the truck, and this says that it has a gross combined weight rating of 29,700 pounds. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 12,100 pounds, and it has a cargo capacity, again, 3,682 pounds. It gives you your maximum tow ratings here as well, and this is something I've been asking for on trucks for a long time, and I love the fact that GM's putting it on now. From a conventional trailer perspective, the maximum tow capacity is 20,000 pounds. From a max tongue weight perspective, 2,000 pounds. A gooseneck tow rating is 21,200 pounds, and the maximum tongue weight is 3,000 thousand one hundred and eighty pounds. All right, guys, so we are on the road hauling this 15,000 pound Keystone Alpine fifth wheel. Right now, it's probably closer to 12,000 pounds because I'm pretty sure it's empty. I don't think uh, they packed this thing up full of gear. I think we're about to pass another truck doing a tow. I think that might be a Montana. Oh, that's a Cougar. And that's actually a three quarter ton truck hauling a Cougar right there. Yeah, that's a Fusion and the other one was a full size Cougar as well. So they have a lot of fifth wheels out here. You can definitely see GMC's emphasis on towing RVs with these trucks. Now I'm not going up any type of grade right now. If it is, it's maybe a half a percent grade but it has no problem towing this fifth wheel. Right now, you really can't even tell it's back there. And that's really what you're looking for, quite frankly. You're looking for the ability of your truck to seamlessly and easily tow a fifth wheel without wondering if you have enough horsepower or torque to do it. And this does a very effective job. And it does it very quietly as well. We have the engine exhaust brake on, and the truck is in tow haul mode going to try to find a reasonable grade to take this up just so we can kind of experience what it's like towing this up something other than just flat ground one thing you can't see but i can is the heads up display and i really like that quite frankly it's probably the most thought out system i've seen and this is definitely an evolutionary upgrade Let's see how we can stop this it stops it very well so they have this all dialed in pretty well we're gonna make a left-hand turn here. Thankfully, there's not too much traffic right now, so we should be good. There we go. You can definitely feel the weight when you first start to turn. You can tell you got something back there, for sure. But once you get going straight, you hit about 20 miles an hour. It does a very effective job pulling this fifth wheel. And again, right now we're actually probably slightly going downgrade, but really it's just, it's a very, very confident towing experience. I don't feel stressed out at all. You don't feel as if the truck's barely making it. All these new trucks do such a great job towing fifth wheels. Now you, you really are going to be hard pressed to find one that has a superior advantage over another. So it does make sense to drive them all. But if you want to know specifically how this GMC pulls, it's doing a really good job. We have the paperwork here. What gear ratio does this truck have on it, Tim? It's probably going to be an upgraded gear ratio, I imagine. 3.42. So this has the 342 gear ratio. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a seems small. It does. Seems like it's a pretty high gear ratio for this truck. I would have imagined it was like a 373, honestly, with how it's pulling it, though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's definitely one of those trucks that's going to be more ideal towing at higher RPMs, but at the same time, the engine's going to be revving a little bit lower whenever you're towing at a higher speed, and that's going to be good for fuel efficiency. But you know what? We're not actually even approaching the truck's maximum tow weight, even though we are going to be roughly right at its maximum pin weight whenever you have the fifth wheel loaded up. So those are the two numbers you really have to keep in mind when you're hauling anything, is the pin weight or the tongue weight if it's a conventional trailer, pin weight if it's a fifth wheel, and the total weight of the trailer. Because you could have a 15,000 pound trailer back there, but if it's transferring over 3,000 pounds to the back of the truck, even though the truck has plenty of additional tow capacity, you may be pushing it in terms of payload capacity. And this truck, trailer combination is just about perfect if you want to get, say, the biggest type fifth wheel that you might want to put behind one of these trucks. Well, one thing that I was talking with the engineers about when I did the Duramax drive a few years ago, when they first came up with this Duramax, is that the, the way the 10-speed automatic is set up, they're able to go with less of a rear gearing, uh, not so tall. They're able to go with a different rear gearing back there because you can set this. It finds the right gear better. Right, which allows you to have better fuel economy unloaded. And it's a better driving experience when you're mm -hmm. unloaded because you have the additional gearing. So it's interesting. They were making the argument that 373, 373 is the biggest they needed to go. Because of 10-speed automatic transmission, they don't need to go 410, don't need to go 4.430. You don't need to go there anymore because you have this new automatic transmission. But this is this is pulling really well. It's what you expect. It's interesting to me, we talk about, someone I was bring up the conversation point with you as well, is, is the new Duramax dual rear wheel, all kind of stuff, 35,500 pounds max towing. But most consumers are RV pullers and this one ton and even a three quarter ton is plenty. You don't need to get to that max towing number, but it does beg the question, with the Duramax package, with this Duramax package in a crew cab setup configuration, you can have a max towing of 27,000 pounds, which you realize is in CDL territory. Oh, absolutely, the minute you break over 26,000 pounds, but again, it really depends on the state you live in and the laws of that specific state. You know, I made a video on that, I've made a couple videos on that topic, and there's so many people that have misinformation and don't have the correct information in general. I've even had law enforcement officers that have come on and had misinformation. Now, real quick, I'm gonna interrupt myself. Yeah, yeah. We are now going down grade. I do not know what grade we're on now, but I imagine it's probably 6%, 7% yeah, grade. Yeah, i in that range, yep, yep. And I am not pushing the brake at all. This is all engine brake. It's holding me at 51 miles an hour. The speed limit here is 55 miles an hour and it's doing a very good job. It's actually dropped to 50 miles an hour, but we're kind of leveling off here now. But it's very effective. I mean, that's the simplest way of putting it out there. The engine exhaust brake has done an admirable job of taking a trailer, a fifth wheel, and slowing it down to below the actual speed limit without increasing in speed at all. So that's impressive. And again, it's I expected that. You know, these trucks are being built so well now, they're doing such a good job with these components that all the truck manufacturers have done a pretty good job, especially for 2019, 2020, in developing a very solid engine exhaust brake. So if that's something you need to check on your box of things you need with your new heavy duty truck, you can check that box on the GMC truck because it does do very well in terms of st slowing down to a reasonable speed with the diesel engine exhaust brake. And so this brings up a really interesting question for you. So you've had the F450, you've towed for years, I've towed for years, you have a CDL, you know, not commercial CDL, but you, you have a lot of experience with this. So would you say this truck today that we're in is gonna be a more comfortable towing experience than say the prior generation? Uh, yes, at this weight, yes. If we were talking about a trailer that was a 10,000 pound trailer versus a 14,000 pound trailer, I would say it's probably equal to the previous generation. You didn't need that. Well, in reality, GMC didn't increase their horsepower torque, right? It's the right, same, same as the previous generation. But the way it gets it to the ground definitely feels smoother. Once we swap and you drive this, I think you're going to agree that you don't feel the shifting at all anymore. In the previous generation, once you got to about third gear, sometimes you have kind of that hard shift 
to the next gear and you don't feel it. This thing is shifting buttery smooth. You can definitely tell that it's a bit of a workout for the engine, but by no means is it stressing the engine out. This engine's designed for it. It's just at a higher RPM when it's towing until you get on level ground. But now we're going down a much steeper grade around a corner. This looks like it's probably closer to about 8% at this range. So I just think it's always interesting when we these new vehicles and new things we're out there driving, you know, we've got to talk about both sides of it. Is it is it a worthwhile investment? I think from the camera system, and we'll show this, you know, you'll show on your screen, I'll show my screen, is that the transparent camera view, the all the different camera views hook up your trailer, the uh, technology, and they have your app on your cell phone, that you can check your trailer, you know, tires, you can check the lights. I mean, it really makes things more convenient, and it does make it I think safer in some, de Absolutely. some regards. Well, the thing that I like to say on my channel more than anything is you have to feel confident. And I can't put enough emphasis on that. You could get a 2002 dually diesel pickup truck with reasonable miles and tow this trailer. But you may not feel confident doing it. You may not feel as if the truck's as capable. You may not feel like you really want to take it across the country because something could happen with an older truck. Something could happen that you're just not aware of because you don't know what has really worn out on that truck or what's about to be worn out. Guys, we're going to swap here in a minute and uh, I'm going to let Tim take over driving so he can give you his impression of what this thing is all about. So. Hang tight. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, and you can subscribe to Tim's channel, which is Pickup Truck Plus. We'll talk to you soon.